Um, if you're just tuned in, uh, obviously this is Shot Heard Around the World. We are with Peter Yolen of South Bay Open Carry. This is L.A. Talk Live, where more than just talk. And what we mean by that is that uh, we do here um, definitely support Second Amendment rights. And our friend Peter Yolen is strapped in the studio tonight. And that's to let you know we're more than just talk. Uh, it's been a riveting conversation up to this point. Here's a weird question. Let me throw something completely off left field. Um, are you concerned with agent provocateurs infiltrating your organization? And what I mean by that is that there is a wealth of evidence that shows that things such as protest, uh, whether it be the G20 or or whatnot, um, you know, black ops, CIA, covert operations, whatever you want to call it, there's a wealth of information that shows that, you know, agent provocateurs will infiltrate that peaceful protest and smash windows so that the media can come in, justify the taking away of, of people's right to protest and things of that nature. What, what do you think about that? Oh, you know, definitely it's a concern of ours. We, we know that, that the anti-gun groups are, uh, they have people, including the Brady campaign, who are on our mailing list. Uh, they're on our Facebook page. You know, our Facebook page, you don't have to like us to see everything on Facebook. We, we have no privacy settings on it because we want everybody to be able to get that information. But we know that they, uh, they're they in there. We've actually had to change our uh, email list. You know, uh, anybody mm-hmm. can post to our, our listserv. Right. Uh, we've had to make our list a moderated list okay. because we found that there were certain things going in where people were speaking for the group who weren't part of the group. Right. And it is a big concern because we are judged by the company we keep. Sure. And, and that's why one of the things that we have is, and, and I brought one along to leave with you, is our code of conduct. Okay. And we're really specific. We've tried not to be an overbearing organization where if you want to be part of it, you're really turning over a lot of your rights. But we have, uh, we expect people to act a certain way in our organization. And that comes right down to being respectful to the Brady campaign. You know, because you talk about do we talk to them. We used to say hi to them, but it didn't do anything at these things. In fact, uh, at, at two events, I offered to send pizza to them because they were outside. They were both pizza events. Right. Because uh, they won't even come in and show the the, 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 the the restaurants the courtesy of spending any money at all. Right. Um, but we're really concerned about that because there's a lot of damage that can be done. And, sure. Uh, we can't control everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're an open society. If, if, if you are pro 2A, if... You want to exercise your rights. If you want to come to us for more information or education or uh, be a part of our events so that uh, you can help us educate people, we want that. But at the same time, there's always that concern that there's going to be some loose cannon or somebody that's getting – I mean, look at Wisconsin right now. Uh, They've got paid protesters. I I was watching the the news, and they were asking some of these kids what they were doing protesting. And they were there because one of them said, well, my teacher told me to come. My teacher drove me. Yeah. Uh, uh, that guy is doing something. Well, who's that guy? Oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, that guy is the governor. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a real problem. And yeah. I think it's a it's a problem with the organized left. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, uh, I think that uh, I, I believe I heard that uh, MoveOn.org and and some of the other you know Soros based kind of organizations mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. actually have people on the ground in Egypt or had them in Egypt. Uh, I've heard the same thing. It's very, you know. It's funny. I don't know if you heard this or not, but there was a, a prank call made to Governor Scott yes, Walker of yes, Wisconsin yes. from a uh, journalist in Buffalo. Yep. And uh, he was uh, impersonating David Koch. Right. And basically in the midst of that conversation, uh, just for a moment, but he suggested to uh, Governor Walker that, uh, you know, we've thought about putting some of our people in there and causing some mayhem and chaos. And just for a second, Governor Walker said, yeah, you know, we'd considered that. And that enough right there goes to show you, like, wow, to what extent are these people willing to uh, uh, suppress dissent in their state? Or uh, Well, or, roll, roll back the clock a couple of months to when the uh, uh, journalist was exposed, right? which was that list of journalists around the country, and they were uh, clearly backing Obama, mm-hmm. uh, and they were talking about putting, uh, you know, fake protesters, creating fake events, fake incidents bad press. Yeah. Uh, and I think it happens everywhere. I think it's, uh, you know, today things have changed so much with the internet and texting and, uh, you can't do anything today. I don't think without being on video. Sure. You know, everybody's yeah. shooting a video of everything. It's almost real time. Now. Right. It's, yeah. Well, in fact, we actually use a couple services where we put stuff up real time at our events. Right. You know, and, uh, it, it, it's gotten to the point now where anybody that wants to say, you know, I could be outside now representing your radio station. Mm-hmm. 
and making claims at some other radio. You know, who knows? Sure. And unless somebody vets me and find out, you know, finds out who I really am, you're going to create as much trouble as you can until the truth comes out. Right. And we're really concerned about it because we have one goal. And that is to promote Second Amendment rights. Mm -hmm. You know, we believe that we have the right to carry and bear arms to protect our families. And we want to be able to exercise those rights. Gotcha. And so many people want to take those rights away. So, look, I want to take a break real quick. And hopefully you can spend at least another 10, 15 minutes with us. There's a few things that I want to uh, touch upon. uh, And before you leave with us today, I really want you to let people know that are listening uh, how they can get a hold of your organization uh, how they can find out more about rights in their state with regard to Second Amendment uh, issues and uh, all of that good stuff. So you, you'll be able to stay with us for a few moments, I hope. Absolutely. Wonderful. If you're listening, this is Shot Heard Around the World. You already know that. My name is Adam Cole. We are in the studio today with Peter Yolen from South Bay Open Carry. It's been a riveting discussion. We've talked about a lot of uh, important things, a lot of interesting things, and we're going to continue the conversation when we come back from the break. Studio line here is 323-247-7443. We would love to hear your take on this, uh, whether you're in favor or if you're against it. uh, You know, we we definitely want to hear from you. So uh, give us a call, and we'll talk to you after the break. Shot heard around the world. You are tuned in to Shot Heard Around the World. Welcome back in. Friday, February 25th, studio line 323-247-7443. We are in the studio with Mr. Peter Yolen representing South Bay Open Carry, uh, an organization dedicated to exercising their Second Amendment rights. Uh, If you're just tuned in, you've missed a very riveting interview. But as you know, you can always go to the LA Talk Live website, go to the On Demand section. We are archived there for your listening pleasure. Um, again, studio line three two three two four seven seven four four three. Peter, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. We've been having some really, really good conversation, and I want to pick up uh, where we left off. Like we say all the time, a lot of the really intriguing conversation happens uh, when the music's playing. So I kind of want to pick up where we what we were talking about while the music was playing. Um, you know, we live in a very uh, chaotic state, if you will. There are a lot of things going on. We see a lot of uh, chaos ensuing in the Middle East. We see things happening here uh, within our country in Wisconsin, in Indiana, and in Ohio. Um, we see the uh, the dollar basically collapsing. We hear of, uh, you know, uh, a move to remove our status as the world reserve currency. We hear about uh, agreements between China and Russia that will no longer use the dollar in bilateral trade. So there is a growing concern, uh, at least with people that I know, that we are headed for some serious times. And we were talking about uh, during the break how, you know, we we have to prepare for this. And one of the things that we need to do uh, to ensure that we're able to uh, maintain if things do go south is, you know, be able to protect ourselves. And I I guess that's really what it boils down to is uh, we were talking about how in Katrina – uh, you know, organizations like FEMA obviously show that they're not really capable of taking care of their citizens in times of uh, natural disaster or whatnot. Um, you were talking about, you know, friends, people that you know that are survivalists that are, are currently preparing. Um, we talk a lot about on this show the the demise of a once free society and it's turning into a police state. What I mean by that is... Uh, it seems to me, and you can agree or disagree, but uh, with things like, you know, the uh, See Something, Say Something program, Janet Napolitano and her partnership with Walmart, where there's teleprompters uh, as you're standing in line to pay for your uh, your Chinese goods, if you will, that are telling you to basically look out and spy on your neighbor. And if you see something suspicious, uh, you've got, uh, you know, a lot of people in our government in this current administration are coining phrases like lone wolf terrorism. And now they're saying there's a new threat. There's the uh, the domestic homegrown terrorism and that there is a growing movement uh, in this country where it seems that people, uh, United States citizens, are becoming radicalized and they're actually wanting to take their own countrymen's lives. Um, how do you feel about that? And I guess, are, are you familiar with an organization called Oath Keepers? I think I've heard of them. I've heard of them. So Oath Keepers is an organization comprised of current and former uh, military personnel, law enforcement officers who've really come together and stated that they unequivocally will uphold their oath to defend the Constitution. 
um, because we were talking about in Katrina during that tragedy, the National Guard was actually patrolling those streets and taking people's guns away from them. And all these people were trying to do in the midst of this chaos, obviously people were trying to get food and water. Um, they were trying to defend their homes. And the National Guard came in and basically said, hey, you know, you got to give up your guns. Um, I don't even know what the question is, but I mean, it seems like, you know, how do you feel about, I mean, obviously, you know, you're a, a proud U.S. citizen. How does it make you feel to see uh, where we're headed uh, in terms of the legislation that's passed? We're living in a post-9-11 world where the Patriot Act, we got the uh, uh, sneak and peek provisions. I mean, there's just so much stuff that's going on that's really changing the landscape of this once free nation based, based upon the principles of liberty. I think we're looking at for me, the saddest time in our nation's history. This is the one time in history where I think that we will not leave our children a better or stronger country or way of life than was left to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it is it is the nanny state. When, when the National Guard is taking weapons away from citizens so that they can't defend themselves, it, it's because the National Guard is afraid of those citizens. They... We are in a place now where the government wants total control and, and they want to be the only people that have the authority to, to, to mandate change, to protect us. And, and they've proven that they can't. Mm -hmm. But what's, what, what's worse is that we are, as a people, following along. You know, it, many people are slow to come out of the ether. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I don't want to pick on the president because, look, being the president's a tough job, sure. no matter who you are. Uh, but when you look at look at a man that got elected primarily on the basis of we want change, right? Because uh, I don't care if you're a Democrat, a Republican, a, a Libertarian. Nobody wants war. Mm -hmm. War is not something that's desired. It's not something that people derive pleasure from. War is a uh, racket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, but, but he won because he wasn't Bush, but nobody challenged him on fundamentally changing America. I didn't know that we needed to be, have a fundamental change. 